So we previously uh, made recommendations on our website for IBD patients in general who, who were on immunosuppressive therapies, and they were general recommendations for pretty well everyone. We've since uh, borrowed from a model that really the British Society of Gastroenterology uh, produced in the past day or two, where we're risk stratifying patients with IBD. So not all patients are treated equal, and we're going to look at patients differently depending on what their risk is of having complicated COVID disease, meaning having risk of complications from COVID, such as hospitalization, ICU admission, the need for ventilator, or death. So the lowest risk group are people who are under 60 years old, who have the low ris lowest risk of hospitalization and death, as well as those on medications that do not immunosuppress uh, patients. So five ASA medications listed there, uh, locally acting steroids like budesonide, budesonide MMX, or steroid enemas, and the brand names are shown there. Uh, enteral nutrition, which is formula feeds or dietary therapies for Crohn's, such as those that we use in pediatric IBD. Uh, probiotics or antibiotics, and other non-IBD related medicines like cholesteramine or uh, loperamide or modium. As well, uh, a low risk group would be people in remission who don't have significantly active inflammation. We know that having active severe inflammation puts you at risk for having poor health and therefore puts you at risk for infection. Uh, being malnourished also puts you at risk for infection. So if you're not malnourished, you're in that lowest risk group and not having any other comorbidities like respiratory, cardiac, hypertension, or diabetes. And so that's the low risk group where you really should be following the Public Health Agency of Canada guidelines consisting of physical distancing, hand hygiene, and self-monitoring as per everybody else in society, and that link is shown there. So the middle group, or yellow, are patients who are under 70 years old because we know that people 60 to 70 um, are at increased risk. Now we have that this uh, slightly lower group, uh, 60 years and older, who are on the, the non-immunosuppressive medicines. Those are kind of in between the lowest and the middle group. Uh, but if you're under 70 and you're on immunosuppressive medications, and then you're in the middle risk group, and that middle risk includes any immunosuppressive medication, so the immunomodulators like azathioprine or 6-MP, methotrexate, all of the biologic medications as well are considered immunosuppressive. And in those cases, if you're in that group, you're at medium risk. And what we recommend is that you avoid in-person meetings, you work from home if possible and hold meetings like we're doing today by virtual technology. If that's not possible and you have to go to work, uh, then you ask your employer for modified duties to allow for the physical distancing. So trying to stay away from customers or from the public. Uh, and obviously there's some leeway here for healthcare providers. I think healthcare providers in particular, because they're so needed at this time uh, of crisis, we, we understand that there's some personal decision that has to take part there and some discussion with hospital staff and, and other people like that. Um, as well, you should be using services for vulnerable populations. So for example, grocery stores are now opening an hour early to allow for vulnerable people like elderly or people who are immunosuppressed to shop then. So if you have to go shopping, you should be doing it then. Uh, as well, the laboratory services and healthcare services are sometimes uh, doing things differently for vulnerable pop populations. So you have to, if you have to get blood work, call ahead and find out if there's something available for you. I think it's worth noting that there's some, uh, again, I, I mentioned some leeway in this medium risk group. Uh, so clearly we know that pediatrics, so children who are obviously under 70, who are immunosuppressed, may be at lower risk. There was an article published just yesterday in The Lancet describing about 300 children, 300 people with IBD in Wuhan province. Uh, and in fact, none of them got uh, COVID. And that was really thanks to social distancing and strict instructions from their doctors to avoid going out and avoid other people. In addition, we know that children are at lower risk of developing IBD, uh, sorry, of developing severe COVID disease. And therefore, um, even if they're immunosuppressed, they're at lower risk for having poor outcome. Uh, the European Society of Pediatric Gastroenterology uh, recently started a registry to find all the children in the world with uh, COVID who have IBD, and there have been five cases reported on their website right now, 
They're all teenagers. Most of them are on immunosuppressive medications and all five uh, teenagers had mild COVID disease, so did not require hospitalization. In addition, there was one in, in the secure IBD registry that Gil mentioned earlier. There's one child in that who also had mild disease who did not require hospitalization. So we're hopeful that even if children are immunosuppressed, they should do well and probably do better than adults uh, who are immunosuppressed. And then finally, there's the high risk group. So if you're 70 and above, no matter what, you're in that high risk group. I'm sorry, but we, we know that the risk of hospitalization and the risk of death is much higher in people 70 years and above. If you're under 70 and you have a comorbidity, if you're under 70 and you're on steroids at a good dose, and we give the good dose in the guidelines that'll be on the website, uh, or if you have moderate or active severe uh, disease, like a new diagnosis or a recent flare-up, moderate or severe malnutrition, or the requirement for parental nutrition, that means uh, nutrition through a central line, those put you at increased risk even if you're under 70. So we call those patients high risk. And in those cases, we recommend that you self-isolate. So you stay home as much as possible. You do not work. You can go out for walks as long as you stay away from people, but please stay home as much as possible. In addition, we recommend that family members of people who are in this high-risk group also try their best to self-isolate, at least avoid in-person meetings, work from home if possible, ask their, their employer for modified duties because they could be bringing COVID home. And we really don't want to put the people at high risk, at, at further risk because the, the virus is coming in from outside. 